to give some tips. So first of all, uh, looking at the ECG, just make sure this is a paste ECG or not. Then look for the mode. Mode means which chamber is being paced so that you can come across either this is a single chamber or a dual chamber. Then it's better if you calculate the lower programming rate of that device, then look for the sensing, then look for the pacing and capture. And again, observe all the turf leads for pacing spikes because you may not see the pacing spikes in one lead. Or so if the P and QRS are together by any mean, it means this is a dual chamber device. And also go through the device implantation indications. Now we will go through a simple ECG. This is just for uh, teaching you. Uh, this is an ECG is showing the pacing and also the native QRS. So this is an paced ECG. The lower pacing rate for calculating the lower pacing rate calculate from one spike to another. So this is 300, 150, 175 and 60. So the lower pacing rate is 60 and there is appropriate pacing and we, have, we are also seeing the QRS, so there is appropriate capture. Now for commenting uh, the sensing, I would like you to note the interval from this spike to this spike and from this spike to this spike. So whether this is a pacemaker malfunction or a normal function. So now we have to decide. So if you closely observe what the pacemaker uh, usually do after pacing and capturing, it starts looking for a native QRS. So if it founds a native QRS, it resets itself to the programmed low rate. So in this case, the programmed low rate is 60. So the device after uh, finding this QRS resets itself from here. And it again waited for the next uh, low program interval for another native QRS. So if there is another native QRS, it will not Base and again will reset is primal. And if there is not any QRS, it will pace. So now to confirm whether this device has sensed it in a proper fashion, so better to calculate from here. So 300, 150, 175, 60. So it means this QRS was appropriately sensed. Now, how will you write this ECG? So just write this is a based ECG and the lower pacing rate is 60 beats per minute. The mode is VVI because the uh, chamber being captured is ventricle. There is appropriate pacing and there is appropriate capture and there is appropriate sensing in this ECG. Importantly, you cannot differentiate between a PPM and ICD on ECG because both pace in the same fashion. But yes, you can differentiate between PPM and CRT on the ECGs, uh, which I will show you later on. So again, this is an ECG from a patient. So there are pacing spikes, which shows this is a paced ECG. And importantly, the pacing spikes are making P wave here. So pace, P, pacing, P, pacing, P, it means the pacing is appropriate and it's making the P waves here and the low rate is 300, 150, 100, it's around 90 beats per minute. And yes, very importantly, if there is no native rhythm, P or Q, so you cannot comment on the sensing. So in this ECG, how will you write this ECG? This is an paced ECG. The lower pacing rate is 90 beats per minute. Mode is AAI because it's capturing the atrium. There is appropriate pacing. There is appropriate capture and sensing cannot be commented because there is no native P wave seen in this ECG. What else they can ask you? The implantation of VVI in sinus node disease. What really happens when you implant the VVI in sinus node disease, the patient may experience heart failure or the patient may have atrial fibrillation and the PMT is very common in patients. So this is the next ECG, just to make them more familiar with the pacemaker ECGs. So in this ECG, you are looking at the two pacing spikes. Okay. And another important thing is P is there with QRS. P is there with QRS. So P is always there with the QRS. So it means the device is 
which I'm going to paste my print. So the first spike is making the P and the second spike is making the QRS. So you have to write it in the same fashion uh, like I have told you previously, but you have to comment on both the chambers. And how will you comment? So again, this is a paste ECG. The lower pacing rate is 75 beats per minute. Mode is triple D. There is appropriate atrial and ventricular pacing. There is appropriate atrial and ventricular capture. And sensing of both atrium and ventricle cannot be commented because there is no native E or QRS. Now moving on to the another. So this is an ECG. Again, if you look here, the P is, is there or with the QRS. So P, QRS, P, QRS, and every P is followed by QRS. So again, this tracing is from the chamber pacemaker. But in this case, the pacemaker is sensing the A and pacing the V in order to maintain the AV synchrony. So this is another example of the chamber pacemaker. Now to the troubleshooting. I don't think so they will ask you more uh, regarding the pacemaker troubleshootings. So this is an ECG from a patient who is experiencing uh, dizziness on and off. Look at the ECG, the V1 is negative, LBB, 2,3 AVF is negative. So there is LBB, 2,3 AVF is negative, it means, and there is a pacing spike before every QRS. And importantly, if you notice the lead 2, you are not visual you are not able to see any pacing spike. So that is why it's very important to see all the 12 leads. So importantly, if you look here in the V3 and V6, so there is P followed by QRS, P followed by QRS. Then there is P pacing spike, but there is no QRS. Then again, there is a P pacing spike, but no QRS. Then later on, there is a P and then a pacing spike and so this ECG shows the proper atrial sensing but and proper in, uh, ventricular pacing but there is intermittent loss of ventricular capture. So the ventricular pacing is appropriate because the device is pacing but the capture is loss. So there is intermittent ventricular, ventricular loss of capture. Now this is another interesting ECG and the scenario you may uh, be seen is a patient with heart failure and after a device implant or any intervention is function class improved. So this is a clue. So if you look closely, the upper six are the limb leaves and the lower one are the chest leaves. So in a patient with a device, the V1 is positive. And the second clue is here, the QRS in one and lead AVL is negative. So if you come across a device, a pacemaker ECG or device ECG in which the V1 is positive, QRS in lead one and AVL is negative. And the scenario, which is of a heart failure patients, the most likely device is CRT. So again, the findings are dominant R in V1 and negative QRS in one and AVL. And let me tell you, uh, the implantation of CRT or the placement of the leads is operator dependent. And the ECG findings are different with the placement of the leads at different places. Like if this operator places the lead in the septum, the ECG findings will be different. And again, the findings of the one and AVL will be changed if the operator puts the CS lead in any other branch. So the diagnosis you will write is CRT. Don't go for the CRTP or CRTD, just write this is CRT or biventricular pacing. What they can ask you, identify the device which is already answered. They, can, they may ask you about the indications, write down the class one indications. They may ask you about the contraindications of this device and importantly the important trials supporting this device. So the trials are here, medical ICD, MEDID1. Medical ICD-1 and 2, MADRID, CRT, RAF, cannot fail the companion. These are all the trials supporting the CRT. 
Now moving towards the EP tracings. So just to give you an overview. So uh, usually the EP traces in the exam are very easy. So just to give you an overview, uh, how to look at the easy EP tracing, divide into it into three parts. The one consisting of the surface ECG, then the labels, and then the EGMs. Now always look at the surface ECG. So there is a P, QRS, P, QRS, P, QRS. So normally in a patient like this, you will see three or four QRS. So if they are doing the Brady study, you will uh, only see two or three QRS. And if they are doing tachycardia, you will see more than four or five QRS complexes. And also the activation will be changed, which I will let you know. Then always observe the labels here. And, this, and these levels are completely operator dependent. Like in our setup, we used to keep lead 1, 2, and V1. And from where this tracing was taken, they used to keep lead 1, ABF, and V1. So don't get confused with it. And then there is RV, which means right ventricle, HRA, which means this catheter is in high rate atrium. And then you will see HPED, which means his bundle electrogram and this catheter is recording from its distal pole and then HPE P means his bundle electrogram and the catheter this recording is from proximal pole and again the CS catheter so this is a decapolar catheter means it has got 10 poles so 1 2 9 10 are there so this is a normal uh, patient uh, tracing from a normal patient just to make you people realize what are the intervals, what are the findings, or how to read an ECG tracing. So the HRA will record only the activity of the high right atrium. It will not record any other activity. And the RV catheter will record only the activity of the uh, chamber, right ventricle, not any other activity. So you may compare it with the surface. So this surface QRS is uh, at the same time of this RV and this HRA deflection is at the same time of this P. So it means the catheter are at their right place. Now importantly, the second important catheter which to be, or the most important catheter which to be noted is the his bundle distal catheter. So the distal catheter may also be marked with one or two. So always remember the uh, distal end is always one, two. So the distal poles are one and two. Now importantly in the his bundle, what you will see is the first deflection is A, which is from the atrium. The last deflection is V, which is from ventricle. And in between you will see his deflection. His deflection will be very sharp as compared to the A and V. So again, there is A, H, V, A, H, V. And in the CS catheter, you will see A. The A will be larger in CS because it's an atrial structure and V will be smaller in the CS catheters. So now just moving on to the next slide. So again, the one and two label shows the distal tip of the catheter or distal. CS catheter helps in differentiating between the right and left side arrhythmias because it runs uh, posterior to the um, RA and LA. H interval normally are 55 and 120 and HV intervals normally are 35 and 55 milliseconds. And yes, this HV interval may be decreased or become negative in a condition which is called WBW or ventricular pre-excitation. So the important findings or the points to be uh, noted here are the concentric activation. So the concentric activation will be seen in AVNRT and AT, which I will show, show you later on. And the eccentric activation will be seen in AVRT. So if there are more Vs and less A, most likely diagnosis is ventricular tachycardia. So now this is for the tachyrhythmias and for the bradyrhythmias. If you see an A and H and there is no V, so the level of the block is infranodal. And this patient is show, most likely end up with the pacemaker. And if you see A, and without A and H, without H and V, the level of the block is nodal. And this patient does not require 
people in the most the block is in the node 